You are watching PR English Shorthand Dictations YouTube channel. This is English Shorthand Dictation number 289 and the dictation speed is 100 volts per minute. Ready? Start. Sir, I rise to oppose the introduction of this bill under the nomenclature of the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill 2022. Sir, already the explicit reasons for opposing the legislative document have been deliberated by our colleagues. I would like to bring it to your kind attention that cooperative society is a state subject under the 7th schedule via entry 32 of the state list in the Indian Constitution. It has already been inserted. So, it is basically a state subject. You are absolutely raising a pertinent argument which also needs to be dealt with. But here in this issue, there is a clear indication that the central government has been encroaching upon the territory of the state government. That is why furor and uproarious protestation has been cropping up across the nation. Since this government has always been pleading for cooperative federalism, this should have been reflected in the preparation of this legislation. I do not know whether all the stakeholders have been consulted before the preparation of this legislation. According to this bill, in the Cooperative Rehabilitation and Reconstruction Fund, which is to be constituted, the profit-making multi-state cooperative has to pay 1 crore rupees or 1% of its profit. Strangely, the government is not paying a single pesa. This is an illogical way that one profit-making cooperative society shall pay for the revival of another loss-making cooperative society. This does not happen in the Companies Act also. Sir, that is why we are opposing the bill. The central government has empowered itself with vast powers under the present bill. This may lead to concentration of power with the central government which may impact the autonomy and functioning of the multi-sectoral cooperative societies and may also create a potential for misuse. For example, under the present bill, the cooperative ombudsman will be appointed directly by the center without any apparent monitoring system to prevent corruption. An ombudsman is supposed to be unbiased. An ombudsman is supposed to be unbiased and keep a check on the government by preventing it from abusing power. However, when an ombudsman is appointed directly by the government itself, it creates scope for undue influence over the decision of the ombudsman. That is why I have a submission before you and the government. Given the ramifications and encroachment upon the state's power, this bill should be referred to the standing committee so that it could be further scrutinized and all the controversies could be wiped off before presentation of the bill afresh. This is my only submission before you. Sir, I rise to oppose the introduction of the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill 2022. Sir, originally in 2002, when the bill first came to light, it was intended to facilitate the voluntary formation and democratic functioning of cooperative societies as 
people's institutes but it seems that with this amendment bill the central government is planning to take away the powers of the state governments with regard to cooperative societies it has four proposals one is setting up of cooperative election authority earlier cooperative elections were looked after by the state governments it takes the authority away it is not clear to me how the act is related to the constitution amendment the amendment came in 2011 this government has been in power for 8 years they have not amended it suddenly the home minister comes forward with the amendment to this bill this bill impinges on the rights of the states it impinges on the right of people to form cooperative societies on their own will basically it will act in bringing more control over multi state cooperative societies by the central government i am totally opposed to this it is undemocratic it is anti constitutional and it violates the spirit of the cooperative societies and cooperation in the country sir please send it to the standing committee you can do it you have the power if you write one line then everything will go to the standing committee honorable chairman sir i thank the committee for examining the bill in detail and making very useful recommendations and observations to suitably incorporate these recommendations the ministry of external affairs held several rounds of ministerial consultations with ministries and departments concerned the amendments have been drafted and finalized in consultation with the ministry of law and justice sir i am happy to note that out of the 18 recommendations of the committee 14 have been incorporated suitably three recommendations were in the nature of observations which have been noted one recommendation is to define clear cut roles of various departments to be reflected in the rules for an effective coordination mechanism this recommendation also calls for sop for deportation and extradition of pirates by the ministry of home affairs so that these could be implemented early and that has been noted and addressed suitably regarding the issues raised by the committee the provision of trial in absentia has been dropped keeping in mind the observations of the committee regarding the supreme court of india's ruling on awarding mandatory death punishment the provision regarding death punishment has been amended in the bill to also include imprisonment for life honorable speaker sir india does not have a specific law or legal provision in the indian penal code or the criminal procedure code on piracy this bill along with the amendments would provide an effective legal instrument to combat piracy not only in territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone but also on the high seas india's security and economic well-being is inextricably linked to the sea and maritime security is a prerequisite with more than 90% of our trade with the world taking place through sea routes and more than 80% of our 
hydrocarbon requirements being sea borne the security of our sea lanes of communications is critical to our national well being